um, to this plant-based lifestyle uh, meeting and uh, presentation. Experience. And it's based on, what's that? I said experience. Experience, yes. And um, it's uh, incorporating Dr. Michael Breger's Daily Dozen that I've emailed out. A lot of you may be familiar with it, may be familiar with it, but we don't have the app on your phone. Um, it's on the board there. We're going to be addressing it in different ways today. Um, and, um, oh, Sorry. Before I start, I appreciate you put your phones in silence mode. That includes anybody who calls me on my phone. That's just not going to happen. It's in video mode right now. Hey, Simone, can I say one thing about that? My phone is always in that mode, except my wife. If she calls, it will ring, and I will probably leave, because that means it's an emergency, because she never calls me. But, but, but just so you know, it, no one ever gets like sound when I call. It's just like, oh, I saw I don't feel that I don't yeah. feel that it won't feel hurt when yeah. you don't answer my phone. So tonight we have four panelists who have volunteered to share their experiences of a plant-based diet and the benefits they have experienced integrating the main daily dozen ingredients. This is a plant-based 102. 101 was in January. Uh, the goal of the session is to provide you with information, possibly even some stories that you can relate to and therefore have a support system with this plant strong group. Pairing up if you like, those who are more experienced with those getting going in plant-based eating. At the end of the evening, please let me know if you'd like to be part of this budding <coughs> system. Uh, yes. uh -huh. <laughs> I want to acknowledge team members from Food and Beverage here this evening, Chef Josh and Max. Thank you very much. You took time out to come. <laughs> so that they can better understand the ingredients that we're looking for when we consume the meals to be nutritionally dense and tasty. I personally know who... Um, those who are, aren't well enough to go off island to get some meals when they don't want to cook at home and they need to have um, their, their needs satisfied with, um, with the club's meals, whether they take in or just um, pick them up and take care. Um, these people, as well as others, are looking for diversity and uh, uh, plant-based enthusiasts <coughs> of mine, Bettina Huffman, will address with the staff after the panelists talk. But before we start, I thought a nice way to begin the evening would be for you to relax, and enjoy where you are, you chose to be here tonight, and take some time for yourself, and the possibility that this can help you at whatever level you care to participate. So I'm gonna ask you just to put your hands in your lap, put your feet on the floor. If you're comfortable, you can close your eyes. Just kind of relax, notice your body parts, you know, if you have any stiffness or aches or just feeling very good right now. And maybe breathe in with your nose and out with your nose. And each time, just breathe in maybe a little more deeply and relax a little more deeply. And do it a few times and just notice how you feel because you're doing it for yourself and being here. Nobody else can do this for you. And just keep relaxing a little bit more and being open to the possibility of what we're talking about here tonight can benefit you and see how it can work for you and how we can support you. And when you're ready, you can just open your eyes Some people say that I'm healthy, I don't have any problems, I eat what I want, I feel good. Well, eating is something like insurance. Most of us have different types of insurances out there in the world, and then there, there are those that don't. Those risk takers who say nothing will happen to them, and if it does, oh well, I'll address it and take care of it then. There are many people suffering, some needlessly, and possibly because of the uninformed choices that they made in the past. There's a lot of misinformation out there that's controlled by a lot of big businesses that have a lot of financial gain at the consumer's expense, or in the case of your health. 
Some people here today already follow a whole food plant-based diet, vegan or otherwise, as there's 50 shades of green at least. And the truth is that we really don't have health care in this country. Most helpful visits and preventative are not covered like sick care is, like acupuncture, chiropractic, massage therapy, yoga. And given the facts that the education that goes along with medical educa uh, education for practitioners is more related to sick care, medical doctors have about five credit hours, I believe, of nutrition. And if they're practicing now, that information is about 30 to 40 years old. Well, the way we consume food may be similar to insurance. It's another way to be proactive instead about the effect of a health care challenge. I read it's like a um, health mindset in order to have a healthy relationship with food. I put together this panel so that the information can continue to build on some of the basics and fundamentals for people who are looking to get started eating this way and with a direction and purpose to continue to build on. So let us start off the evening with Greg Hoff. Greg shared his background with us in January at the panel discussion. He's now going to capsulize here on how he integrates Michael Greger's Daily Dozen in his diet. And what's interesting about Greg is that he has a lot of his meals prepared by a local company called Warsaw, who delivers his meals that he orders. And it's an option for people to utilize if they don't prefer or don't want to cook. As a result of sharing back in January, Ellen Gendelman gets some of her meals prepared by them now. And, um, and it just goes like that. I may, I may try some meals too when I'm busy and can't do some things. And um, I'm going to let Ray take it from here. All right. Thanks, Ray. Yeah, I'm sure. All right. <laughs> All right. So um, as I mentioned the last time, I've been doing this for a long time, uh, probably six and a half years, I guess. And uh, one of the things that helped me initially was I got this refrigerator magnet with the Daily Dozen on it from uh, Dr. Greger. So to stick this on the refrigerator, I know every day whether uh, I'm covering the bases or not. And it was a big change initially, but now it's, I don't even think about it really. It becomes just second nature. I can't imagine eating any other way. Um, but the, Simone asked me to kind of talk about how I do it, and I thought I'd just kind of go through the to a day of what I, what I eat. Um, how I do it. So for breakfast, typically I start the day with a massive amount of oatmeal. I love oatmeal. I make steel cut oats in my uh, Instant Pot. But it's cinnamon and blueberries and walnuts, um, ground flaxseed. Um, it's just, it's awesome. It's probably, it's probably a thousand calories at least. <laughs> but it's, uh, you know, very healthy and I love it. Also I love banana and some coffee. Every once in a while, though, I like to mix it up, and I'll make something with um, just egg. Um, there's a product you can buy in public here. Um, it's in, in the uh, dairy section, but it's, it looks like scrambled eggs. And uh, I'll mix it with mushrooms and onions and all kinds of stuff and make a, a scramble. Or have um, avocado toast, that kind of thing. Uh, for lunch, usually it's a huge salad. Um, try to get some, some beans in and um, or I'll make a vegetable stir fry with some tofu. Um, and as Simone mentioned, I, I eat a lot of my meals now um, from a delivery service called Morsel. we are based here in, in Savannah. Every week they deliver a box full of food. And, you know, it's ready to heat up and eat. And so over, over time, I've got to be sort of a, a lazy plant-based eater. <laughs> and, uh, it's super convenient. It's really good. And I'm like, you know, there's no cleanup. Um, so it's really, it's really nice. Um, we also, you know, we'll, we'll uh, get some bean burgers. Right now, our favorite is the uh, Chipotle uh, black bean burgers from Costco. And they're really good. Um, and sometimes I'll eat some things that are a little bit more processed. Um, there's these um, chicken patties that are made with you know, beans or something. Um, so definitely not chicken. Um, so that's good. We're all making sandwiches with um, some of the like tofurkey um, deli slices they have over in, in Publix. Uh, snacks are usually fruit, mixed nuts, um, green tea, hummus, stuff like that. For dinner, you know, usually I'll have having one of the morsel meals, um, or I'll make um, like black beans and uh, brown rice with some Tabasco sauce. 
uh, whole wheat, whole wheat pasta with um, the garden um, imitation meatballs. Um, I had posted on the Facebook page uh, my recipe that I love for uh, portobello steaks, so I'll make that occasionally. And then um, it probably, I don't know how many times a week to eat the club. And uh, I'm so thankful there's so many more options now. Um, it's not probably the, it's not unprocessed, but the impossible uh, burger is awesome. I love it. Um, the vegan nachos at Cabana Bar, um, I eat those a couple times a week at least. The lemon curry at Palmetto is insanely awesome. It is so good. I can eat that every day. Um, I get a veggie pizza at the deck, um, and the, the pop-up meals that every, you know every once in a while will be listed in the top five. And as soon as I see them, I'm ordering, and usually I'll get some extra just to keep in the refrigerator and eat. Um, and then also um, this Friday, there's the Earth Day scavenger hunt, which is going to feature uh, vegan food. So yeah, and I will be there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, great. Thank yeah. you so much. Appreciate it. Um, Amanda's approach to coaching is holistic, exploring the connection between mind, body, and emotions. Rapid transformation is achieved by engaging the subconscious, the conscious, and more subtle, intuitional mind. This allows for your path, I'm sorry, this allows for you to find your path, not only the ones um, that are right for you, but one that feels right. As someone who works holistically, the importance of food is more than simply nutritional. It also has one of life's greatest pleasures and the heart of my philosophy. Exploring how this affects our energy is one of the core principles of my work. <coughs> Amanda's journey informs my coaching style, informs her by her coaching style. She studied and worked with holistic practitioners, principally yoga and meditation for 20 years with professional training in meditation, breath work, visualization, and relaxation techniques, as we did one earlier. She's certified as a DeRose Method instructor since 2016 and teaches these modalities, alongside being a coach to craft a dynamic, unique, and tailored experience for each client. Amanda's work as a personal and executive coach with <coughs> professional qualifications from THSA out of London, Advanced Health and Wellness Coach, ACE, Re, uh, Reach Outstanding, Executive Coaching, and Theory, uh, Theory U Program, and ICF member. Thank you for your knowledge and sharing with us tonight, Amanda. So, the floor is yours. Um, so, where to begin? I, I threw all that meat out about over 10 years ago, so I, I don't even remember exactly when people say, how long was the last time I owned that? I don't remember. Um, but I think that I remember looking at my mother and looking at my mother-in-law many years ago, and these were two spectacular women with tremendous amounts of energy, and I, I known both of them for many years, and at one point I, I, I took a look and I said, who do I want to be when I reach the age that they're at? And, and it was a real wake-up call. Um, and I think this is something that comes back to this sort of holistic approach where what we do is not just about what we eat or how much we exercise or what drama, state of drama that we live in. Um, there's, there's really a 360 that affects the outcomes in general. There are exceptions. Um, and so for me, I think, you know, having listened, Greg, to your breakfast, it's a little different than mine, but not, not that different. <laughs> you know, we, um, I think overall, we probably the main difference in, in, in off, I think I have a much wider, um, a broader set of culinary tastes and demands. <laughs> <laughs> I am both, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I am both, Gender. I mean, the English food's awful, I see, but I mean, I, I, I grew up with, my mother was a cordon bleu cook. I grew up with a very broad, um, 
I ate everything. I was raised that you had to eat everything that was put in front of you. If you didn't, that, so, so for me, one of the most difficult things, I mean, I, I was raised that people who did not eat what was put on that plate were just the most annoying people in the world. <laughs> and, and so emotionally, I, I understand that it's very difficult for many people to make a decision because there's a huge amount of peer pressure that asks you to perform. <clears throat> that you, you know, you need to eat what, whatever it is. And, and trust me, I ate it. <laughs> um, and I like lots and lots of foods. People will often say to me, well, don't you really miss meat? And the interesting thing that happens, I, I was probably the original carnivore. Okay? I mean, I was just <laughs> red meat all the way. I could have eaten it. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, I really loved it. Um, and, and, and snails as well, and oysters, and you know, like everything you can imagine. I ate everything. Um, but over the years, when you do start to take things out of your diet and you bring other things in, because you create a vacuum, obviously, nature doesn't like a vacuum, um, your palate will change. And when your palate changes, if you offered me a steak today, um, I just would like not really, I really want one. And so the, the wonderful thing is, is people often think that you're somehow depriving yourself. Mm -hmm. I am passionate <coughs> about food. I really like to eat. In fact, I used to, I used to say I wouldn't trust someone who didn't like their food. Because it's such a basic, it, it's such a, you know, it, it's just such an important, important thing for us. Um, and so, learning how to, well, first of all, realizing that you can make changes in your diet. Some people make them overnight. And other people, like me, actually took a very long time. I, I, I was, was a very step-by-step -step person. That was my own personal story. Um, but it doesn't mean that you're going to be deprived or that you're going to be having this sort of bland, boring food. Plant-based food, um, I, mean, they're, they're, I remember going for one of my wedding anniversaries to a very famous chef, English chef's um, plant-based pop-up. He was not uh, a vegan chef, but he was so interested in the food and he was so interested in, in farm-to-table that, and it was, this This had two Michelin stars, and it was called Roganic. And it was not only one of the best meals that I have ever had, but it was also one of the best meals that my husband has ever had. My husband is, is not plant-based. Um, at home, he's perfectly happy we don't, eat, we don't eat meat at home, unless this family, if my kids are there, my kids eat meat. I, I cook meat for my kids. I don't, I don't like to impose um, my personal choices on other people. But plant-based food um, can be absolutely marvelous. And, and, and another story that I love is this, this book. I don't know if this author, Yotam Ovalenki, I don't know if he's particularly well-known here in the United States. This book's called Plenty. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of feel like I sort of grew up with him because he's an Israeli um, cook. I call him a cook more than a chef. In London, you first opened this sort of deli that suddenly everyone was talking about. And it was probably, I don't know, 15 years, maybe, no, maybe 20 years ago now. And it became, everyone was talking, everyone wanted to go to Otomanki, and then he opened another one, and then he opened another one, and then he started writing in the newspaper, and then he opened his own restaurant. And, it, and, and we all kind of, and then he was writing um, a column in one of the leading newspapers in the UK that was all about plant-based food. He's not plant-based. And then he put all these recipes together and he did the first book. And there's no meat in this book. And then he did another one called Plenty More. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and they're fabulous. I mean, they're fantastic books. And so one of the things that I have personally found, this is like my only tip I have, and then I really wanted to actually ask people here what you find to be difficult. Because then if you tell me what you find to be difficult, maybe I can actually answer 
in some way that might help you or help you find you know, an answer for yourself. Um, my experience has been that Dr. Gregor's Daily Dozen is marvelous. Um, and if you have a medical issue, it works. And I will, you know, one person who can tell you that, and, and, and I can tell you from a, a um, personal experience that this, this does work if you follow it. Um, it isn't just doing um, strictly vegan. You, you need to follow the ratios in the Dr. Gregor's, and, it's important, and it does work. I, I did a, a vegan diet for six months many years ago for my cholesterol, and my doctor, I was just telling Jeff, my doctor said to me, you're gonna love the results, just wait till you see the results. And guess what? Zero. Made no impact for me, because I have a slightly different situation probably than your average person. Hmm. And, um, but when I, when I um, followed Dr. Gregor's in, 18 months ago, my cholesterol went down 30% in three months. And my doctor thought I was taking statins, but I said to her, I'm not taking the statin until I've tried the diet. <laughs> um, it worked very well. So you can learn very quickly. I brought this scale with me because I happen to think if you're doing a diet like that for medical reasons, <laughs> it is useful to buy yourself a little scale and actually learn what you're serving of a particular food is because some because in that if you're doing it for medical reasons with you know where you need some serious results uh, and not everybody needs to do that um, it's helpful to kind of understand what is a serving of us what is a serving of us what is a serving you know what 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 are those things be um, and the other thing that I the reason I wrote the book was just to say that very often um, you can kind of look for recipes in really good cooks who, who, who have done the work already. You don't have to reinvent the, reinvent the meal. The, the meal. <laughs> um, look, look, look for recipes, and you might need to adapt them a little bit, or you might not. You might just find recipes. There's lots of recipes in here that will absolutely fit the bill. Um, and from that, you, you'll you have a much wider range. Uh, my, my thing was if I could find 10 recipes that I really liked, and my husband liked, I need 100, you just need 10. And you're kind of set, and then you can build on that. So, any, you know, is anyone, is anyone, has anyone started or wants to make some changes and they're kind of like hitting a wall? <coughs> Or how do you get started? In any aspect of your life. <laughs> you I know I'm here, but, um, but that was going to be part of what I talked about. Is, you know, your, um, it doesn't mean, like, when I started looking at the Daily Dozen, and when I listen to you, when I listen to Greg, when I listen to anybody, <coughs> I learn things. So, like, I, I wrote some stuff down, but, like, even contained within the Daily Dozen, there's things that maybe I don't do as regularly as I want from the Daily Dozen. So. Part of what I was going to say, just to get the ball rolling for your question and answer, is, you know, there's things that I don't do well. You know, and I would consider myself pretty good at eating plant-based, but I'm still not that good, you know. So, I mean, I could do it better, and if everyone here wanted to do, like, a challenge, I would do that, because I work with challenges. Yeah. <laughs> challenges yeah. On, a, on a daily sort of... Yeah, with challenges. Yeah, and, and I, I think the thing there is that I always like this thing called Pareto's Principle, which you probably all know about the 80 20 rule. You, know, you do not have to be perfectionists. Okay, let the whole perfection thing go. Okay? If, you, if you get it 80% right, then you know you tweak things, and sometimes you do it better, and sometimes you don't. Guess what? I had whipped cream in my coffee this morning. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> oh yeah. But I'm not going to do that every day. I just did it this morning because it was a holiday this weekend, and we said, and I actually didn't have any work to bring out this weekend. But there was some left over, and my favorite thing was to have a quick. And it was delicious. 
I think it's important. Just don't don't tell yourself I can never eat this again. Right. That's the thing. Yeah. Don't do that. Exactly. Yes. Yes. That yes. you can. It just doesn't work as long as it's not every day. I remember a friend of mine years ago saying about chocolate, and she said, "You see, chocolate is a treat. We don't have chocolate. We don't need chocolate every day." Hmm. I have a great story for that because, if you don't mind, but my mom, I was born in England, inherited, and we don't know each other yet, but <laughs> my, mom's, my mom's very British, and yes, I mean, I like to, on occasion, it's a um, I like to, I like to eat those, they used to be better, but the Cadbury's um, uh, candy coated eggs, they're my favorite dessert ever, and my mom would count them because she also liked the eggs. So I got seven <laughs> eggs, and that was my treat for after dinner. And like she spoke to, uh, finish everything on your plate. These are all things that I've heard like thousands of times. <laughs> but yeah, the little guys, but just, it was just a solid chocolate. And they changed a little bit when they were bought and sold and whatever else, but they're my favorite, still my favorite. So yes, sometimes I, yeah, I'm looking around the room because I'm on this panel, but sometimes like I look at the bag and I'm like, mom, I'm gonna have as many as I want. <laughs> like, like she told me, and it, this is outside of plant based. You know, this is just me and her. Like, like I made it to the mountaintop. I bought a bag. I brought it home. I chopped it up, and now I have fifty, and I can do whatever I want. With it. I can eat them all now. I can starve myself until I have money to buy more. But I can do whatever I want with them. So, I oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we're plant based. I'm not plant pure. I can drink some alcohol from time to time. I may have some French fries from time to time. I'm going to choose, and, but I'm plan, plan based. I'm not going to wander off and just go over the mountain and just fall off, you know? I'm going to regain myself and go, okay, I had it then, and I'm going to pick myself up and do my oats or make a waffle out of my steel cut oats, which I found again on my phone. Your phone is your favorite thing yeah. because if you can have the daily dozen on your phone, it will show you the portions. You have to click on it on the category and it'll show you your three servings of beans, or your three servings of this, or your cruciferous vegetables. It's right there. It doesn't have to be any more difficult than that. You want to convert a recipe? Just Google and see what comes up. Text me and let me know. I'll try to help you find something. I tried to make matzo meal pancakes this morning using aqua baba for the first time. It wasn't like frying them like the good old days, but it kind of gave me that feeling of like, okay, I did it and I'm done, I move on, you know? <laughs> but I used the aquafaba and it came out okay, no oil and no other additives to it and you know, we just followed a simple recipe as a suggestion. It's a suggestion, you don't have to follow everything if it doesn't work for you. Find what works for you, find your 10 faves, you know, and such like that. I have cookbooks, I don't use them all. It's, you know, some people have to follow the recipe right to the T, that's fine. Just invite me up. Okay. Well, yeah, one, one other thing that I found to be Sir. tremendously helpful recently, I, I just yes. got like I just love it, is the New York Times cooking um, recipe thing. And there are hundreds of heart-based recipes on that. And so when you want a little inspiration, it's just great. It's got the picture. It's got everything. What is that? Website? Mm -hmm. What's yeah. that? Yeah, and, and it does something else. And I'm yeah. sure there are other things. Yeah. New York Times is an app. And it, there's stuff. Yeah. It's and you can save, you, you, you can make a library of, of recipes that you like. And if you find a recipe somewhere else on the internet that is not on theirs, you can take that link and you can put it in your recipe box in the New York Times. So you can keep your recipe box. I'm sure there are other apps that do that too. But I forks over knives, forks over knives, you can compile a shopping list from that as well. Yes. And somebody can do that. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. a golf that was staying at our house recently with a golf outing with the wife was there. And she was sharing with me about how to do that. And she's not plant based, but they ate all my food, no problem. Right. You know, so that's the thing. And the main thing is to find. You know, just find recipes that suit your culinary palate and the things that you want to eat. And and there's so much out there today. Um, but those two places are pretty good because they they took a lot of boxes because we can also become overwhelmed very easily. Could you repeat much those? choice? Are these web pages you're giving? Yeah, this is, if you go to the New York Times, it's an app, and it's also
also, it's also a web page. You, you make an account, and it is a paid account, but it's not very much. It's, I think, about $4 a month. I think it is well worth. It, it is a very, you know, it's, it's, I don't like to pay for things like that, and it is absolutely worth every penny, because the, you'll, find, you'll find everything you can possibly imagine. Great chefs, great recipes. The recipes are well, you know, they've been tried well, and uh, I haven't had one that didn't have one. And if you like Wurgle or any other oh, no, puzzle, no, 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 and if you like no. it, I'm just saying they all live in the same place. It's not the world. <laughs> Wordle or spelling bee? Spelling bee is a better one. Yeah, I'm not going there. Yeah. Oh, it gets, it gets, it gets you into this club that's I really know, cool. I know. And you like I know one of those clubs. There's like a crossword yeah. on that. Yeah. Yeah. I've become obsessed. I would never stop. I don't know. Okay, thank you so much. Any questions afterwards, feel free to address them to whoever you want. That's fine. And if you ever want to reach out to somebody else and you didn't quite get it yet tonight, you know, let me know and I'll hook you up with these people as well. And I'm, I'm free to stay after it. Okay. Okay. Well, you can, you can address, but we have to get something back on that uh, screen, I think, too. I'll do that. Can yeah, you do that? I, please, please do I'll it. do that. Thank you. All right. Well, I'll speak to a couple points that... Um, Amanda and Greg already made um, stuff they mentioned, uh, stuff that I do, um, and then you know between all of us, you'll just be you'll be a lot better at this stuff than we are. Um, I just like to research and write things down. So um, I can attest to the advantages of having. Um, I think Greg mentioned. Um, uh, well, I, I love the diabetes insurance thing. Uh, Simone, that's excellent. That's a great analogy. Um, the Just Egg at Publix, um, haven't seen it, but I'll try it. Um, I thought of a joke, morsel to your dorsal. So, yeah, I mean, they're bringing it to your door, I gotta try that. So, Costco has a lot of, uh, not just what Craig mentioned, but they have a lot of more plant-based options than, uh, like if you belong to Sam's already, I know it's another subscription, but from our family's point of view, it's well worth it based on how much we're consuming. I think the main difference between me and the rest of the board, we got a lot more in common than a few differences, but I'd probably be maybe as much as all of them combined. So um, that's what my that's what my presentation is gonna kind of center around is, here's the Daily Dozen uh, listed up here. Um, there's some things on there that you probably already do. Um, I would kind of encourage you to add, add to them and then see what kind of things fall through the cracks. And you may be surprised to find out that those are the things that are kind of sit heavier in your diet, like um, like I know, like I could eat uh, like an Angus beef burger, you know, as a recovery option for uh, sports and performance. But I do know I'm not going to be ready for the next activity that I have that day, or I won't feel as good. Like my belly and all my gut health and stuff won't feel as good. Um, but the plant-based options all seem to give me the energy that I need and are able to give me the turnaround time that I need. For example, like uh, Greg and I talk a lot about running. Um, not as much anymore, but still a bit. And, um, and we, uh, I know that most people um, in here that I personally know, <laughs> or that are here tonight, have some experience with exercise. Now notice that exercise is on the daily dozen, right? So if you already exercise, it's a daily 11, right? If you exercise daily or at least a certain amount of times per week, whatever you work out, doctors, friends, whatever you have, um, beverages. So if you already drink, here's five boxes, and here's um, your 12 ounces of water, tea, or coffee. Greg mentioned he likes a cup of coffee in the morning. Just check, you know, that's one box of liquids for his day. So, so what I said earlier about these things, they're, they're a lot more accessible than you think. Um, and the reason I said I would look at it as a, as a challenge with all of you is because I would love to um, do you know, each one of these things each and every day. Now, exercise, I probably get like a thousand times that box, you know, so I'm doing a little more in some categories than others. But certain categories like um, the cruciferous vegetables, other vegetables, greens, um, even other fruit, which, you know, a medium sized fruit like an apple, um, is great to just add with something. You know, like if I eat an apple as I'm going out the door in the morning, or if I eat an apple with my lunch, there's a, there's a box you know, that I can check for that. So it's very strong, Simone mentioning the, the apps and things, because they, do, they don't hold you accountable, I mean it's an app, you know? but, <laughs> but you are able to see how much 
progress you've made. And, and if you feel really good, I have a little um, thing. If, if you want to check next to your name that you, that you signed in on, I can send it to you. What I did was is I just created a, a couple, a few weeks in a row. So four weeks total. The first week, I think I point out how much exercise, because I know a lot of you exercise and, and probably get the amount of water you need in a day, an average day. This would be, this would probably be, I would suggest without exercise. I drink a little bit more than that, a lot more than that, but for you a little bit more maybe. <laughs> um, and then these other things um, that are on the list, um, you know, you, you kind of add them in. So on the, on the thing I made for the group, uh, you know, if you want to, want to see it is kind of like week one I introduce something you know something I might not I might pick something from this list I don't do particularly well and I just introduce it the first week and then the next week maybe I add or not maybe I did it but two more and then the next week I add three now I'm up to six and I'm doing it every day for the whole week and then on the fourth week I say okay well if I've come this far I'm just gonna do the other six that's partially me being lazy but also if you can do those things you'll find it very easy to add in the others. And then slowly but surely, your, your mind kind of tells you, well, I'm doing so well with these things and I feel so great, why don't I just do a little bit more? Pretty soon, um, like Amanda was saying with your palate, it does start to change and you're like, wow, you know, like maybe once in a while I will eat this thing that I, that I used to love, like my little eggs or, <laughs> or something like that, but it's not like it controls your, your attention. You know, you, you don't have to like think about that thing all day. You're just kind of eating the things that that um, you've grown to love in addition with the things maybe you used to love. And over time, you kind of realize, well, these are the things that are giving me the ability to do all the things I want to do. You know, I'm not tired on vacation maybe, or you know, I'm able to get up for that early morning pickleball session or, or something, and, and I don't feel like it's, you know, like, oh, here I go. You know, I got to get revved up. It's kind of like, yeah, I like am ready to do this, you know? and I'm. Happy to say that after teaching since I was, I don't know, 15, you know, teaching tennis or teaching pickleball or anything that I personally do, I feel excited to go do it and I feel like I have the energy to go do it. So I never feel like I have to, yeah. No, no, I, continue. I was just going to interject something. Because we're eating so many um, fruits and vegetables and grains that are cooked in water, we're ingesting a lot more water than we would normally do if we were eating animal-based products that have like virtually no water. So you may not have to drink as much or consume as much unless you're out on the courts or whatever. But if I don't, I'm not out on the courts, I'm not doing exercise my day, well, oh, I only have like two glasses of, you know, but I'm not deprived. I don't feel, you know, drained. I don't, I feel, you know, plenty refreshed and everything else because I'm eating so many other things that already have all that moisture contained in there. Like watermelon is mostly water, you know, type of thing. Lettuce, mostly waters, you know. So just eating those foods will give you a lot of the moisture that your body needs as well. Exactly. And, and it's important that Simone mentioned that because for another reason too. It's because a plant, a whole food, plant-based diet or whatever, um, and you know, the diet that we're talking about today is based on plants like Simone said, and it's also based on plants for you, for e each and every one of you. It's not based on us as a group because it's impossible to know how much Coach Mike needs to consume. You know, I consume a lot. You know, if you're around me, you'll see that. I need to eat something to stay going or drink something, but, um, but I'm not everyone. You know, I look at these things and I'm like, well, other people are eating one medium-sized fruit. Where are the large fruits? You know, where the, you know, where are the bigger things that I can consume more of quickly so I can get ready for whatever it is that I have to do. Um, so yeah, exactly. Excuse me, Pat, did you have a question? Oh, I, well, I guess I'm just confused. Several times in here, in all the vegetables, you say that one cup of raw equals a half a cup of cooked. And what is it about the cooking that makes it better or, or stronger, or whatever it is, or whatever? I'm, I'm not quite sure. Why is that? Why is, well, I, guess I, guess I would think it'd be the other way around. I guess I thought raw vegetables would probably be healthier for you than cooked vegetables. I can speak to it a little bit. Um, what happens when you cook? What happens when you cook a vegetable, or a lot of things actually, is the process of cooking. Uh, if you think about it, like you know the hoods that are above the. Well, they're taking away things from the food. So, like originally, when you start out, I mean, yes, it has to be clean and it has to be you know raw vegetables. You want to clean them and make sure. Um, but once, you know, if 
hopefully we're not having too much pesticides and stuff in our food, but once those things are cleaned off and you're eating them, you're taking everything that was put into them and ingesting it. But when you cook things, you're breaking down some of those things, you know, that are contained within the vegetables, like uh, certain nutrients, and you're kind of stripping them away from the food. And if anyone knows more about it, please tell me. But that's kind of what cooking does. It kind of strips down things it can enliven some of the flavors and you add some spices and things, but it actually breaks down the food as, a sp as opposed to building it up. Because you're, you're essentially taking up uh, something that you could eat, like you could eat a raw carrot, it might be a little hard, but when you cook it, it gets softer, right? And it becomes more palatable in some cases for people, but it's not necessarily more nutritious, sometimes less. So, yet, yet for tomatoes, you know, cooking it brings out the lycopene and such like that. And you're not going to eat a raw potato. Maybe you can do squash, like I do a butternut squash, grate it on a salad sometimes or have it in something. So it's just, you know, it, and, and when you cook it down, you know, you're going to need to, that one cup of raw now is like a quarter of a cup of cooked because right. it right. just lost so much moisture. Okay. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, moisture and the volume. It's it's just has many volume. And physically, physically, the vegetable, that's a great point. But yeah. Physically, they change as well when you, when you cook them. Um, I think it's, yeah, I will say it's, it's a good thing to eat a mixture of raw mm. and cooked because certain things, like someone said, you get more nutrients if you cook it. And sometimes you can't eat raw or it's not. You're not going to eat an eggplant okay. raw, you know? So yeah, right. it's just, you know, I, try to, I don't really think about it. I just eat like, like, There's certain things, like beans and things like that. I'm not going to eat that raw, right? You have to cook those. But like broccoli, I'll eat broccoli raw and I'll eat it cooked. So I, don't, I don't really think about it. You know, and I get more nutrients one way or the other. I just both have all the bases covered. And those may be for you, um, I'm Mike, what's your name? Pat. That Pat. 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 Um, you know, for you, you know, maybe adding this raw one is one in isn't something you do right away. You know, maybe you start with some <coughs> other things that maybe you already do, and then try that. You know, like it says, there's two boxes, so it says one cup of of raw vegetables. Uh, that would be twice a day, right? So I might do that by adding in at lunch. I mentioned lunch. That's a great place to add things in because breakfast. I'm usually rushing, you know. So, so I eat the oatmeal like uh, Greg does. It's easy. I put in some things that I like. Um, maybe even some stuff I don't particularly like, so I can check my boxes. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just me, you know. You don't have to be like me. Um, but then at lunch is a great time to kind of, for me at least, is a great time to kind of experiment. I have more time in the middle of the day. There's, it's usually really hot out. So in my experience, people, some people, you know, at least it was probably out there at 12 noon today, at one o'clock. But the one o'clock, two o'clock tennis and pickleball times are extremely hot. And I actually prepare my whole schedule for the summer. It sounds weird, but, but like in the spring, I'm like, okay, summer's coming. I know people are gonna want me on the court the entire day. But as a coach, you know, I can't really handle all day. I'll be the first to admit that, in the summer at least. So in the spring, I start to back off and I start to do like four or five hours in the morning maybe. And then I take a break um, that's my lunch experimentation time. And then I go back on court in the evening times when it's cooler. Just personally for me, that works. And then by the time summer rolls around, I'm much more prepared to tackle the day. I built up some good food, and, and not that you can bank food, but I built up some good food and maybe even some weight. Because over the course of the summer, I'll notice that me personally, you know, I'll lose some weight because of all that intense exercise. So then in the fall, I do the same. I kind of back back off and it fits other people's schedule, I think, too. Um, but these things, like, I'll just give you an example of each real quick. Exercise, I mean, duh, you know, like I do, <laughs> I do that as a big part of my day uh, anyway. But if you have something that you already do as an exercise activity, check. You've already done a part of the daily dozen for today. So congrats. Um, beverages, you know, my five glasses of uh, water a day. I, you know, since Simone said this, I've been thinking about that one a little bit more because I do drink water, but I'm not saying I don't like other things, you know? So like, you know, I actually stopped drinking a while ago. Yesterday I had a sip of my wife's peach, whatever that thing was, uh, Bellino, I think it's called. Bellini. Bellini. <laughs> yesterday I had a sip of it to see how it was. Of course I did, you know? But, you know, I still uh, drank my water with dinner or whatever it was. Um, you know, whole grains, um, it says here, you know, a cup of hot cereal, I, you know, I might be accomplishing some of that in the morning, 
Um, but you know, we have a, we do do a lot of pastas in the evening. My wife's really good about doing pastas and, and things like that. Um, she has a very busy schedule, but but she's good about incorporating that part of our diet. Um, she's doing dietetics uh, as her degree work, which helps me because she's on top of all this stuff much more than I am. Um, spices, you know, a little bit of turmeric. Turmeric, a fun fact, is India has the lowest amount of um, Alzheimer's cases in the world. And why? Because they incorporate turmeric um, with a lot of meals. You know, it's one of their staple spices. So they put it in a lot of their meals, and as a result, uh, essentially, um, uh, what do I want to say? Alzheimer's is a swelling of the brain. So over the course of their lifetime, they're taking tumor just in its itsy bitsy um, uh, itsy bitsy amounts every day. <clears throat> but what is turmeric? It's an anti-inflammatory, so it keeps you, uh, in this case, the brain from doing that same type of swelling. So hopefully, our memory and yes, also in India. Uh, much lower incidence of various forms of cancer than anywhere else in the world. Very good. Prostate cancer being one of them. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I do fresh turmeric on different things. I buy the younger ones, so you just don't, really even, you don't even have to peel it. And um, I started also taking a capsule um, as a result of Ellen telling me um, that she does every day. And I said, well, I don't even do it every day. So if I take a capsule, I notice my knee is feeling better. I don't have that same pain, maybe I'm losing whatever. So just a little bit, you find out a little bit here and there and you experiment. Maybe it doesn't work for everybody, but if it works for you, you know, there you go. Um, under the, the nuts, you know, I keep a, the only thing I keep really at work regularly is a, is a jar of nuts. And I prefer cashews to each his own, but I just eat some cashews. Like whenever I'm, you know, I need a snack, a quick snack or something I eat at work. Um, uh, flaxseed, you, usually most people are like flax what, you know, <laughs> flaxseed, that's an oatmeal, uh, an easy oatmeal additive. I can just put it in my oatmeal and, and kind of check that box and I've had my flaxseed for the day. Um, other vegetables, greens, these three here, um, like Greg mentioned, his salad, usually those are tackled in salads. I've really come accustomed to drink, or to eating a lot of uh, Brussels, I'll be honest, like, I didn't eat Brussels sprouts until like seven or eight years ago. Because I would see movies where they would make fun of Brussels sprouts just as a joke. And I'd be like, those are disgusting. I'm never eating this. But now I eat Brussels sprouts and kale and stuff like that. And it's very good. I mean, I enjoy it. Um, green, uh, the greens here, um, I think that's extra on top. Yeah, that's extra on top of here. Um, the raw, we mentioned, you know, like just the, like some baby carrots or something raw. Um, I like sometimes I'll chop up a larger carrot into smaller baby carrot pieces and then just eat that at work, like in a little bag or something. Um, uh, other vegetables here, there's lots of vegetable juices out there. Um, some we would probably point you to more than others. Um, but uh, these, these three categories I find easiest to, to incorporate at lunch. You know, if you're struggling to get these into your day, lunch is a good time for me, it might be for you. The, uh, the other fruit, the one medium fruit, I really like this category because I eat, like I said, if I'm on the go, I'll just eat an apple and that's a medium fruit. I prefer the, what is it called, the gold, harvest gold or something? There's apple. so many different They're so good. apples here. It's, <laughs> it's perfect. It's so good. Reference, yeah. uh, berries, once again, if you go back to that oatmeal, it's like the wonder <laughs> mixing ground. You know, like you can put berries, you can put, I wouldn't say beans maybe, but, <laughs> but uh, you can maybe put some spices in there if you can handle it. That would be like the uncomfortable one. Um, nuts even. Uh, there's a lot of things. Uh, Flaxseed, you can put a lot of it in there. Um, beans, I, I admitted to Rich that this one I might not do as much of which is why I said it would be a challenge for me too to get more of these. Uh, my wife incorporates them into our meals in the evening, but I could do a better job of getting more of those types. I do love um, uh, boiled peanuts, and peanuts are uh, like a legume, uh, which falls somewhere in here. I'm not exactly sure, but, but they're very good. I love eating those. Once again, they're boiled though. Um, they're all would be better. Um, but then, uh, you know, the edamame, I, I very much enjoy. You'll see that quite often at, um, you know, uh, seafood or not seafood, um, Asian, right, Asian restaurants, sushi, things like that. I love edamame, it's a good choice. Um, you know, then you have your tope and tempeh. And tempeh, just so you know, people see that one too and they're like, what is that? Um, that's just like, 
you know, if you're looking for something that's, uh, I guess, in the forms that I enjoy it in, it's kind of like the closest thing you get to kind of like a smokier uh, non-meat. So if you like that little bit of like, for example, I, we went from a, uh, about five years ago now, I guess, um, we went from a bacon and pineapple pizza to a pineapple tempeh, maybe vegan cheese pizza. And so that's like, and you can even get that at Whole Foods. So Whole Foods will make you a, a, a plant-based pizza, you know, with the plant-based cheese and, and you just have to call them. I know now I won't be able to order them anymore because everyone else <laughs> will order them. We're going to take my soy, yes. But I want them to have, that's a good problem for Whole Foods to have. So, but the Whole Foods, they have the um, plant-based cheese, they have, um, you know, marinara is contrary to popular belief, but the bread that they they cook with and the um, and the marinara sauce are are plant based by themselves. So you start with that base, and then you add on um, some plant based cheese, and then you put on some uh, pineapple and tempeh, and there you go. You have your you know Hawaiian uh, plant based pizza, and it's very good. Hey Mike, uh, I went to Whole Foods and. I was going to try that tempeh, but it's very, very high in sodium versus uh, tofu. So I switched to tofu. So what's your thoughts on that? It's very high in sodium, seven well, to eight, nine hundred. Um, I will say, I mean, I guess it depends on how they. I mean, Simone might know more about the food prep side, but I would say, from my experience, um, I need it. So I need a lot of. Sure. I need a lot of sodium. I actually. I don't need it. Probably. <laughs> well, there you go. So, Most so of us don't to need your it. to your not just to your palate, but to your needs, you know? So, whereas I can consume probably, and there's one way in the home, but I can uh, I can probably consume four or five of those slices and eat a lot of tempeh, not there's much on every slice, but I can enjoy that and be perfectly fine. Sure. Whereas somebody who has an issue towards the sodium, and you tell me, yes. well then I would go to Whole Foods and I'd say, well, what else can I put on there? You know, like maybe a, maybe a tofu that might not- is very low in sodium, the one dollar yet. Mm -hmm. Is there a different brand, say, at Brighter Day? I haven't been there yet. Okay. Check it out. Yeah, well, yeah. anytime we, we go to the clubs, I uh, was talking about Maybe chef, like, it like an air freight stump, I always tell the chef, do not add any salt, mm -hmm. which is fine. And they, they don't have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's a great point, and, and that would be where I would say that, you know, we can give you great um, advice and, and, even, and even more personalized right. advice, too. Right. But it is a it is a lifestyle, I would say, the lifestyle that you enjoy. You know, I'm not enjoying what you eat unless we're best friends. You know, so, and we eat all our meals together. But uh, not to say we can't be. But you know, um, but I'm still leaving that door open. You know, but, but you know what I mean. Like if if we were around each other all the time, maybe we would eat some of the similar things, and we would be able to to coordinate that better. But. From my experience, each everyone's what they eat is entirely their own. You know, like I don't think I share exactly what I eat with anybody. Um, not that it's a secret, but that even my wife doesn't eat the exact same thing. We talk about you know food and what we want to eat, especially when we're together. But I mean, it's a mystery for her when I come home and I'm hungry or I'm not that hungry, you know, because I've eaten a lot of sugar. But uh, that's what I have. Thank you, and um, Thanks, I'll turn Appreciate it back it. to Simone before Jack. Okay, thank you. And possibly a new face to many of you is Jeff Adams. I first saw Jeff when he introduced Andrew Weil and Dean Ornish downtown right after we moved here eight years ago, though I didn't quite get his message then. I understand it now. And Jeff will tell you a little bit about his background and the hundreds of people that he's helped in Savannah off the island and how he's um, recovered and, and gotten off medication as well as he's helped other people do that. The same thing as spokesperson around the country. So we'll lay it off a few people and then we'll hit Bettina and then food and beverage. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just curious, anybody, was anybody at the Ornish program that was... Uh, um, eight years ago? Yeah, eight years ago, <laughs> the Trustees Theater and stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They said you were. That's good. Yeah. Uh, at that program, uh, Dean Ornish, uh, called me, right? Because we didn't know each other for. I've been in this is in this area for about 25 years, right? And I've been very, very, very lucky, I mean, beyond luck, right? Uh, not only for my own stuff, but also to be able to meet and understand and be friends 
with many of the best doctors in the world, all right? I mean, Dean Arnish is one of them. And in this particular case, he was here, but he called me on the phone, and he said, this is Dean Arnish. Well, yes, what I do, you know? <laughs> uh, and he said, I'm coming into town, and can we get together for a while? And I, we did. We, we talked about an hour before he got there, and uh, uh, then he invited me on stage, and I gave a little very brief talk, and so on and so forth. So it's really great. Here's the world, one of the world's most famous people in, in Call me if I stay. But anyway, uh, another thing to, while I'm in that area, I'll mention uh, about Dr. Gregor. Okay, all right. Uh, I've known Dr. Gregor for tons of time. Okay, and I used to call him, email him, and talk to him on the phone sometimes about coming to Savannah. Okay, and I would say, oh, come to Savannah, and, and he'd go, oh, yeah, okay, and then he, he would put me to this group that would do these kind of things, and they said, okay, you know, the current fee is $12,000 for a talk. And I said, well, I'm not paying nothing, so it's not gonna happen, but nevertheless, thank you. <laughs> Six months later, I call him again. Six months later, I call him again. For years, this went on, okay? And finally, I saw he was coming to Sun City. I say, Doc Gregor, I said, uh, you're coming to Sun City? I said, man, not that far away. Uh, in a time now, you kind of, meet my requirements to come and come and give us a talk, even though I'm not gonna pay it. <laughs> and he said, yeah, he said, you're right. He said, okay, good. Then he called me a little while after that. He says, I got something. He said, you're gonna to have to pay me a little. Said, What's that? He said, well, I want the rental fees. I'm gonna be in, in Sun City. He says, I'm gonna rent a car and come to Savannah, give a talk and drive back, and I want you to pay for the rental car. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, I'll do that. <laughs> so it cost me $69 to have Dr. Gregor come, <laughs> world famous guy, and so on. I mean, incredible. Now, when he was there, gave a talk and everything else, and of course, I was on stage with him as well. And it's the fact that uh, uh, when it was over with, and people had his books and stuff like that, he spent over an hour in the vestibule, in the lobby. All right, signing books and talking to people and so on. So I mean, he is absolutely a great guy. Yes, so was Ornish as well, all right? Uh, uh, but a very really great guy to do all that and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, do everything he's done for us and the world. So the reason I'm telling you partly that is when you read his stuff and you look at his website and so on and so forth, uh, is the fact that at least you're gonna understand that deep down in, Here's a guy that really cares about people and so on and so forth. He's not doing it for the money or nothing like that. Believe me, okay? Otherwise, he wouldn't do it for he's 69 times. Uh, but anyway, so really, really is great. So, and his website, uh, nutritionalfacts.org, is the fact that uh, many of them, uh, many videos, thousand probably over, uh, many of them are two or three, four or five minutes long. Right? Some are 15, 20 minutes long, and some are over an hour. And so that means that every day you want to take a look. Just go this thing, you got five minutes, you can see a two minute video, no problem at all, on a different subject and stuff like that. And believe me, you, you increase your knowledge all the time, and you're gonna, you're gonna like it a lot, so on, and then everyone wants to say, yeah, I got an hour. All right, so you, you watch for half an hour, 45 minutes, one of them. And they're all listed there, so it's easy to see. So that's really yeah. good. Now, uh, pardon me, uh, maybe they want to write down that website. What was that website again? Oh, <laughs> nutritionfacts.org. So if you brought pen and paper, that's an excellent website. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. You just go into your uh, the app store and download it onto your phone, and you'll get the Daily Dozen. You'll get, you know, you just keep clicking around, and you'll see all the videos and a lot of information and. And such like that. There was even a way that you were able to send them some questions. I think a while ago, I had right. done that. Right. <laughs> okay. My story a little bit. I'll try to make this as quick as I possibly can. Just find that uh, I went to my daily, or not daily. I went to my yearly doctor visit. Who was a good doctor, a good friend of mine. I was a squash player. I played squash all over the country and world, actually. And uh, uh, so because of it, I was a squash player, and I was involved in the squash organization, both worldwide and in the United States, most of my friends were doctors. 
probably 70 percent of all the people that I knew and hung around with were all doctors. And the rest of them, because it was an Ivy League sport, the rest of them were uh, accountants and stuff like that too, so I knew everybody. Right? So I went to my doctor for a yearly visit. He calls me and he says, oh, come back, take a look, we got, I'm going to do some more tests. Oh, okay. So I go back and do more tests. He calls me back a few days later and says, you need to come back in and do more tests. What's going on? I've never had these tests. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, like, come in. Never mind. Don't give me a hard ass. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, we're, 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 we're good buddies and stuff like that. So he calls me in and he shows me the fact that he has talked to many of the people that I know, all my friends, that were at the Strong Memorial Hospital in Rochester, New York, which we're talking about. And at that time, that area was one of the best medical places in the world. It wasn't just the best in the United States, it was one of the best places in the world. So medical information was just great. And so he said, I showed this to so-and-so and so-and-so, which all friend, all people I knew. He says, just to get as many opinions as I possibly could, he says, I, I'm so sorry to tell you this, he says, but we think you have about three months to live. Hmm. And he says, you, you, need, you need a new heart. Your heart is so terrible, you need to have a heart transplant. He says, but today, and I checked today, all right, the wait list for the heart transplant is almost a year. And he says, you only got three, it's not gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. So he knew my wife and everything. Go home and take care, get all your stuff together, so that now you had a business too. Uh, he says, so when you, when you do die, at least you're gonna have all that kind of, in a way, it's not gonna hurt the family at all, as far as anything, you'll, you'll be prepared. And of course, that was very shocking. Right? And so I began to do that. I went exactly the same day and got a hold of my accountants, my lawyers, and stuff like that, and I explained what was going on. I said, I've got to make sure all my <coughs> everything's in order, and I sign all the paperwork so that when I'm gone, at least it's not going to be you know, a, a, any worse than it will be, or any, any better than it will be. But anyway, so, and then also at the same time, the next day, I went, went to a different medical center. I called them and told them what I wanted to have done, tests and so on and so forth. So I went to a completely different medical center in a different region entirely to get a different, completely different opinion. And they said after that was done, that took a couple of weeks because it took weeks for the, all the tests to come in. You know, I'm talking about nuclear stress tests and all that kind of stuff, anything I could think of. But anyway, he says, you know, we have some bad news. He says, uh, you're, you're, we think your original doctor who said you have three months um, was a little optimistic. So we don't think you have quite that time. And so, of course, that was just, I mean, you know, you can imagine how someone told you that. And particularly if you've gone through all this, all the tests and everything, and all the people were friends of yours for so many years, all right, there were dieters and so on, and they all said, yeah, this is nothing we can do. It's impossible. It's just, okay. All right. Then I ran across Dean Arnish's book. I was in the book business. Ran across Dean Arnish's book, so I read that. Changed, just changed my diet. It can't hurt. I'm gonna die anyway. I'll do it. So, so I did that, okay, and changed my diet completely, and so on and so forth, and kept at it and kept at it, and uh, that was uh, 25 years ago. So I, they didn't. Uh, the original term of three or four months to live. Uh, it didn't happen, so that's very good, and I feel so proud, and it's been great. And when that happened, I decided to devote my life to trying to teach people about plant-based, and what happened to me might inspire some other people to try it as well, okay? And so I've been doing it all this time. I devoted everything I had to it, right? and uh, so it's just really been a great journey. I, I've taught so many people, and just in, just in Savannah, I've had over a thousand people completely reverse many of their lifelong heart problems and diabetes and so on, just completely gone. I mean, it's just amazing. Right? So it really is great. So this information you are getting and the people you are finding, you have it for you, the Gregor and, and the Ornish and the rest of the people you will find out as you come to these meetings, right? those are the ones you really want to pay attention to and look and explore them a little bit. Go to the library and get a few books by that, and just put it in your desk and just kind of look around or put it next to your uh, couch when you're 
commercial comes on TV, just pick it up and kind of glance at it. You find a little something you read, and before you know it, you're going to be interested in this morning, one way or the other. And some of them will really show you lots of things, and some won't show you as much as you want to see, but we're all different, and all the information is different. So that really is great. Right? I say the information is different, it all points in the same direction. Plant based eating, no question about that. Okay? So, um, so in order for me to have lived this long and to be here now in front of you, is just every day, I can tell you right now, every single day that I wake up in all these 25 years that I've been, I convinced myself, I, indeed I was going to die because it took a while to convince me. Every single day when I wake up, it's a new day. It's a day I did not expect to have. And I got it. And I want to do something with it if I possibly can. So it's been just really, I mean, if you can imagine that, maybe you can or not, but it's just, just oh. I mean, it's, because I didn't die last night. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but, uh, so you, you kind of get the idea of, of, of what goes on. Right? Sorry about that. Uh, yes. Do you ever have a heart transplant, or is this the same ticker that you started with? Same ticker I started. That's okay. yeah. Yeah. So how long did that take then to reverse all that? Uh, well, actually, well, from well, shorter than three. I mean, I would. Sorry, but, but I would just say that you know, like that. That was what I was thinking in my head as he was talking. I was saying, well. How many years ago was that, right? Like, how long did it take? Well, preferably, like, from this panel and from other things that you're interested, because if you're here, you're interested, and from other things that you attend, we don't want it to get to you're seeing your doctor and they tell you you have three months living. That's a tremendous, tremendous story in a very uh, absolute kind of way. You know, it's very shocking to, I'm sure, all of us here, but also to, especially uh, for him. You know, that's, that's a tremendous thing for anyone to say to you is you have three months, get your affairs in order. It's like, whoa, like, you know, I wasn't expecting this Tuesday morning, you know, but he had that Tuesday or whatever day it was morning, and he, you know, uh, decided, like we talked about, it doesn't have to be drastic for people here, but it was for him. He had a very real circumstance that required him to change how he was living, and as he spoke to, you know, it, it wound up reversing um, a lot of that, a lot of heart disease, and, uh, well, he can tell you better, but, yeah, yeah. I found it very inspiring. <laughs> I, uh, you ask how long it took and so on and so forth. Right? I noticed the first that within a couple of weeks, okay, right? And I just felt better, all right? And I'm thinking, maybe this is my brain, you know, make my body feel good, which of course it can. Right? Right? But then uh, I was walking down to the swash parts uh, at Storm Memorial Hospital because it was connected to uh, uh, the hospital. And my doctor was coming the other way because he also was a wash boy. He says, Jeff, he says, I haven't seen you in, in almost a month. He says, How are you doing? I'm like, God, I'm so glad that you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> I think I owe money, I'm not sure. But, um, but anyway. Hey, I'm major I, I'm major <laughs> uh, so I said, I. I I go, I changed my diet, I'm feeling a lot better. His diet smiled, they ain't gonna do nothing. <laughs> Not gonna do anything for you at all. <coughs> you come back in and let's do more tests. I said, okay, so I went back and did all the tests again. Now that took many days of tests. I mean, days there, okay? In fact, I got to know his secretary more than he knew her. But it was working because he was out doing stuff, the rounds and stuff like that. And I would come in and he allowed me to use his computer because at that time I didn't have a very good computer. A good computer. And of course I could get into the websites of the hospital so I could look up all doctors and look up all this information that I couldn't do unless I paid hundreds and hundreds of dollars to do it. So I was in his, in his office, in his own office. I had my own chair <laughs> in his office. I was using his computer for oftentimes four or five hours a day. I mean sometimes five or six days a week. You know, just really he's there all the time. So uh, one of the things that I, I didn't quite understand in the beginning was the fact that uh, uh, he would introduce me to other doctors and he, they'd say, he's a 3M'er. Mm. And, I, oh. okay. mm. and I'm thinking, okay, I didn't know what that was, 3M'er. Three three and no, it wasn't that. So I asked the secretary, after a while, I said, what's a 3M? He calls me that. I don't understand. I'm sorry. 
Jesus, she saw what? Modern medical miracle. Oh. Oh. Yeah, so very good. So, in helping my people, the people that come to my classes and stuff like that, right? Uh, believe me, as far as how long it takes and so on and so forth, if type 2 diabetes completely gone sometimes within two weeks and never come back. Sometimes it usually takes about uh, six, seven weeks. Right? Heart disease goes away within a month or two. Right? I mean, just it's, it's absolutely insane. Right? It's just so great. Yes, sir. Uh, two questions. One was heart disease hereditary in your family, and two, what was your diet prior to that incident? Good. All right. Uh, as far as heart disease in my family, my dad died when he was 56, mm -hmm. so fairly young. Okay. All right. And uh, I don't know if he had any heart condition, not that I knew of, all right? But I didn't know his medical stuff, frankly, so I can't answer that very well for you, so I apologize. And my eating that particular time was a standard American diet, you know? Uh, one of the things I like best is hot dogs. I <laughs> <laughs> love hot dogs and stuff like that. But I mean, you know, um, Part of my family is Italian, so they would make Italian foods and stuff like that. And it, you know, they tried to do a good job. I think they probably did for the most part. <clears throat> but then, of course, they changed completely, which made them kind of crazy because it was still so, so different. But uh, yeah, so uh, uh, was that both questions? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah you get it. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Sir. Yeah, real quick. Uh, where are your classes and how do we attend and uh, Q and A's and anything like that? Okay. All right. The classes um, I had those for almost 15 years here in Savannah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, when COVID came, okay, people didn't want to come anymore, which I understood. So I stopped. All right. So I haven't done them for, since then. I'm thinking about starting it up again. Okay. All right. And the classes are actually uh, we meet once a week for seven weeks. Yeah. This is a limited class. Each class is three hours long. Okay? And the reason why it's that is because we learn a lot, you understand a lot, we're watching videos, we're doing this, doing cooking demos, it's you eat everything, right? Each class you eat about three or four different meals. Okay? Yes. Not whole big meals, you know, right. pieces yeah. of little one, okay? All right? Yes. All right? And so you get an idea, a little cooking demo sometimes, right? Uh, we go to the grocery store sometimes. I mean, you know, so you get to know the how and the why of everything you need to know. Okay. Believe me, it really is so, so, it's so good. So I'm just, the other day I was just talking to somebody and uh, beginning my, well, perhaps starting them up again. So if that happens, <coughs> tomorrow we'll let you know, okay. all right? And we'll, we'll go from there. Do you but, do yeah. private counseling? I'm sorry? Do you do private counseling? Uh, yeah, I'm happy to talk to anybody for any reason. Yeah, yeah. for a fee, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Whatever. Yeah. Sixty-nine dollars. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. It's an even eleven thousand. Yeah. But just, just, to share, just to share with you, the how I met Ray was at Publix, <clears throat> and he was behind me. And I forgot what you had. I think did you have the kite cream cheese? Yeah, no, I had the hummus. Oh, you had the hummus. Oh, you had oh, you had the cedars. The stone. No, the roots. The, the roots. roots. Hum the roots, roots, roots hummus right. without oil. Right. And I looked at what he had. I was like, oh, I didn't know they had that there. And he looked at my food, and he goes, oh, like I said to him, are you plant based? And he goes, yeah. I said, for how long? A week. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> communicating like that and I let him know that this was up and coming and and that was like three or four weeks ago and you know that yeah. was how I met somebody just with your antenna your eyes you just you know, <coughs> notice things, you know and um, yeah, in four and four or five weeks I already lost 15 and um, wow. when I get laser focused on something I'm there I mean yeah. I'll pay whatever you know, no, no, no. to go talk to Jeff. I mess the way I am. That's good, Jeff. Yeah, that's good. Plus, too, you know, same thing, right? I mean, when we have those classes, our classes are also very small, all right? Less than 10 people. Yeah. Because it was so intense and everything. And it's so great because he would be there and, you know, be talking about his story. And he would introduce somebody over there and so on and so forth. And everybody would get a little different point of view from looking at all this stuff. 
And so then you really begin to understand about eating things this way and so on and how different it can be and how you can change your life and stuff and how it will change your life. The nice thing too is almost everybody that was in the class, they would get so well, they look so good, almost better and so on and so forth. Right? Uh, their husband and their lawyer, or their uh, brothers and sisters and stuff like that would say, what you been doing? You look know, very good. And they, they explain it. And so they'd be interested a little bit sometimes. So that little small group would spread the information beyond and beyond. So it was very, very great. I mean, it's just so great to see people get so much healthier and so on and save so, tons of money. I mean, yeah. you know, so many people didn't have heart disease anymore. Way down. <laughs> medication. Doctors, medication. Yeah, most of the medication is completely gone. Right? I mean, I, I, many people saving over hundred thousand dollars a year. Believe it or not, the majority is around four or five thousand. Okay, uh, because they only take a couple of pills a month or something, whatever they're doing. But anyway, and their doctors, of course, doctors here in Savannah. I have a few doctors that send me their send me their patients when I was doing so. Send me their patients, right? And which is very interesting, I don't pay them a penny. I never pay them anything, okay? And, uh, but yet they would send their patients to me because they knew it worked so well, particularly if they had a, a patient they didn't care, it just was tough to communicate with a little bit, all right? And they had different opinions and stuff like that. So they would send it to me and I would do the very best I possibly could for them, of course. But, but really, it's been, I've been in one journey that's just been so incredible right now, so. Uh, if I die in the next five minutes, don't worry about it. Don't feel sorry for me because not only have I not here. done very well for myself all this time, but also the fact that I've helped so many people. I've got to devote my, the rest of my life to this. And it's just great and, and so wonderful. So uh, it's very great to have someone with the moon and so on, uh, promoting her stuff and everything else. And so, uh, and we'll talk more, more about this as you know, these meetings go on and stuff like that. So, after all, this is only 102. There's plenty of numbers after that. Right. So <laughs> yes, I have Mark. a question open to any, any of you all or yes. others as well. Um, there are some medical conditions that <clears throat> the conventional medical wisdom is antithetical to uh, plant-based or whole foods or nutrient-dense foods. Um, and it's throughout the recommended diets but amongst many, many authorities are very similar. And to give you an example, like uh, diverticulitis, um, colitis, and it's, God forbid you have a whole grain in anything. Mm -hmm. Or a nut. Or a nut. And I don't have those conditions, but I, I know some people that do. And it's um, very challenging because well, to get it up, of course, do you have any experience with people going on this kind of a diet that have those conditions? <clears throat> I do a little bit. Um, I'll say that um, whatever the affliction is, that's what, that's what changes it from, uh, that changes it from a diet that people put out there for um, everyone to enjoy something a little bit more personal. Like I think Simone spoke to it a little bit with it being plant-based, right? Or, or adding things in from the Daily Dozen or eventually maybe uh, switching. I mean, it, it's something you work with a doctor on and you say, here, these, these are the things that I can add in, I think, because of this other condition that I'm dealing with. And then I would say um, it's, it's as you go. You know, you may, after incorporating some of those other things into your diet, you may notice that more things open up for you, or maybe you do still have to stick away from definitely allergies, <laughs> you know, and, and things like that. Because people have allergies, and people have, you know, they can't eat nuts, or they can't eat, you know, any tree nuts. I know lots of people that have all kinds of allergies, and and it's a shame. But I have heard that that, that those things can change, you know. So I'm sure with a condition like diver, um, the last part of it, that perhaps you you change the things that you can, and you just don't change the things that you can't, because we're not interested in the things you can't change. It's more in the little bits and pieces that we can improve, and then see how you are then. You know, I, I may be incorporating the exercise, the, the daily amounts of uh, uh, drinking water, and I notice a huge improvement in my, in, my, uh, in my health, 
And then it gives me more confidence to enter into some other things with my doctor's guidance. You know, we're not saying to do anything against what your doctor did. I'm sure I'm glad Jeff did. But, you know, but, you know, he had to make a drastic change at a time in his life that was very necessary for him. Um, but for the rest of us, maybe we have more freedom to uh, put things in more gradually. You know, add things to our diet, maybe sub subtract a couple things that are causing us problems. Um, but your body lets you know. Like, I, I run long distances. I'm training now for an Ironman. Um, and your body tells you. You know, when you exercise to the point that I do, pure stupidity, you know, your body gets back to you on what things are good for you in a more real-time sense than maybe the average person. Like, it might take three or four days for you to recover from something. I need to be recovered yesterday, you know, because I have to work the next day. So I'm much more meticulous about what I'm putting into my body from simply a what I'm getting out standpoint. So it's like this goes in, garbage comes out, like in terms of performance. I'm really curious if any of you have any personal experience or know people that have had these conditions that have gone to this, made these kinds of changes. Because oh, uh -huh. if, if one talks to a doctor, an MD, they have almost no experience or education. In, in, right. And it's the same list. That if, I, if I do research and I see 30 years ago recommended diet for these conditions is the same thing today. And I'll, I'll, address, sorry, I'll address that real quick if I can. All right. I spent many times. I've been to Harvard lots of times, okay? Right? As well as Cornell and all, all over the place and so on, all right? For lots of different reasons, all right? And when I was meeting with the people at Harvard, okay, about the third or fourth time I'd done this, and I said to the people that were in charge, I said, uh, you know, the information you people are giving to doctors and so on seems to be counter, counter to what's really the best eating habits and so on that exists under science, scientific principles. And the guy looked at me and says, well, you don't understand. I said, well, what, what do you, I, right, I don't understand. He said, no, I ask him. No, you don't understand. I said, well, what do I, he said, look. He looks around, with, you know, he keeps kind of like this kind of thing with all the kind of doctors and stuff like that. He says, we make our money by selling drugs Big and doing procedures. Yes. Okay. There is absolutely no money in teaching people what to eat. Or, or in doing research on things that can't be copyrighted. Right. I have, a, I have a personal story though. Now this is special just for you guys. Something you may not know about me, but that you may, well you will know now, but I have... Speak into the microphone please. Yes, I, do. I have bipolar disorder. Okay, I was the hype man. I haven't told many people this, so if I get emotional that's why. But, but I've been living with this for a very long time, and I don't like telling people about it, but I will tell you that, um, sorry, I said, uh, sorry. Um, and I've never said it in front of a lot of people, but, but I, I told a few people, obviously my wife being one of them, but, but I will tell you specifically for brain disorders that having, so you have a real time, real camera example, and this is my unveiling to the world. Um, that eating a plant-based diet is extremely good for your brain. So the turmeric things, the all the things that I point to specifically are because they help me. Like in my, so like five, six years ago, I had a terrible experience with uh, hospitals, the medical field, with people telling me that I'd never be able to, sorry, um, people telling me I'd never be able to do anything anymore. Like as they told me I couldn't, um, play sports, I couldn't do any of the things that I that I want to do in life. And through, you know, you mentioned meditation and things like that, like I was able to get back to the point, and this is pre-landings, this is pre-everything that I've done in Savannah, but I had some, no prior history, like I have no relatives with that disorder, nothing. It just happened to me, and I was thrust into a world that I didn't really understand. Um, I was turned down for um, recently for like a life insurance or something for my family because of, I think because of this condition, um, they said it was from a doctor up north that I know and she may have mentioned this to them, but they're not supposed to, but they do. And so I can tell you from personal experience that this diet agrees very much with, um, with moving me away from having very uh, extreme notions in my brain. So I, 
yes, I do the meditation, yes, I exercise a lot, and yes, I try and eat as well as I can, but like you mentioned with it being holistic, it's a part of a holistic approach to a very healthy person, mind, body, you could say spirit, you could say um, foods you eat, everything creates a package, and what you want is for that package to be something that um, hopefully other people enjoy, but also something that's that you feel okay with, you feel comfortable with who you are. And I mean, again, I didn't plan on saying any of this, but um, because people look at you differently, you know, they treat you differently. And um, but you've gotten better without the drugs, without the doctors. Well, I embrace that really? side of it too. A big part of my, a big part of my. Uh, growth from then was understanding that I, as he did, I accepted the terms, you know, like whatever they said, I was like, okay, I guess I won't be able to play tennis anymore. And then that's what, that's what got me. I had two choices. Either I never played again and we know we wouldn't be having this conversation or I said, um, I'm going to, I'm gonna do something about it. Like, and that wasn't plant-based eating. For me, that was meditation. That was everything that I talk about, like Zen tennis or Zen pickleball, or like, or like finding a center in your life is much more important for me than it may be for the average person, but I know it can help everyone. And, you know, so it's a personal journey, but it speaks to just to extremes. Like I would say one extreme in, in food is eating one way, one extreme is eating another way. There's a happy place in the middle that makes you a complete, um, <coughs> happy person, you know, so, sorry, and, no, Mike, and you're welcome at the same time. Thanks for being vulnerable. That's very important. Uh, vulnerability is very address, important. Um, there's yeah. a book called Fiber Fuel by Will Bolshevich. He's actually has a practice, and I can send you um, a picture of the book. He has a practice in Charleston, and uh, Marcy turned me on to him. He has podcasts and such like that about creating a better um, microbiome gut mm -hmm. so that your cells can replenish themselves and get healthier to eliminate those preparations in the gut. Yeah, I mean, it's a process. That, that, that illness didn't come on overnight if you weren't born with it. You know, it grew over time when things were just aggravated. And we have to remember these things that we may be suffering from or other people have did not come on overnight. And people want everything instantaneously last, last year, you know, and it's not going to happen. It takes diligence. It takes time. It takes commitment. Just like it does when people want to go out and get better at golf, at pickleball, at tennis. It takes time. And you have to do it in order for it to, to get the results. So I'll be more than glad to share that with you, Ani. I can send you a I picture. I want to of add something on to go that. Go ahead, Marcy, go and, ahead. And it's like what, when you start eating this way, it's, if you have digestive issues, you know, you may have to eat more cooked vegetables than raw vegetables till your system gets to it. You may only be able to eat a little bit of beans for a while and then increase it. It's not like... You know, for most people that have been eating the sad diet or worse, you know, once you get start eating healthy, you're gonna have most people are gonna have some digestive issues. Be gentle with yourself. You know, I mean, oh, us Americans especially, we're so hard on ourselves. It's like we gotta go for our force, but with food, it takes a while and. Um, <coughs> You know, there are symptoms that, that cause digestive issues. So, you know, if you haven't had grains at all for a long time, you know, you may have to eat that sourdough bread that may be white, but it's fermented, so it's going to be easier for you to digest. You know, and I come from a different modality. You know, you might have to eat white rice for a little bit till your system gets used and then introduce the brown rice. You know, be but you know, the cooked foods are easier to digest. The cooked anything is easier to digest. So you might have to do that first. And even to be speaking about digestion, just like um, preparing breakfast, I'll just wind up this one thing and then we'll go into move on. 
Um, like I can't run around and play tennis or pickleball and digest my you know, food even though I wake up and hungry. But if I have a smoothie that's loaded with soy milk that's unsweetened, there's some beans in it, right? And then I put a frozen banana and I put other berries in or other fruit in and I put some spirulina in and I put some of the acai powder or acai frozen and some spinach leaves and some scoops of oatmeal and some a little bit of flaxseed. I had so many of those categories already right in my smoothie. And then I'm, I'm, I can move on from that. But my body is not working so hard to try to digest while I'm trying to run around and, and perform in another way. So part of this, the difficulty is navigating all of this stuff. So it, so this is extremely impressive and I'm already you know, on board with it all. But to find the right um, formula for each and every person is different. Each and every person has different dietary restrictions to start out with. Not to say that they can't be healed from it because oftentimes the symptoms are a result of having the poor standard American diet, which gives us the diverticulitis and gives us the gluten, you know, sensitivities and gives us the inflammation and, you know, the, um, you know, the disorder, you know, whatever, you know, bipolar or whatever. So um, trying to do the right thing and find our way through that is difficult. We have a group of 40 people, how many, 50 people here? So is, are the resources to come to you first? I mean, we can buy every book that's out there and we can spend oodles of time trying to figure it out. What's a simple way to get to make the change? And each person, like you said, is different. Some people can do it overnight. Some people, it's a migration. Some people, you know, it's a slow introduction. But when we have questions, I'm stumped on and it's keeping me from moving forward. Where do we go? You you're you're going to come to me. Contact any one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could, because we started out about a month ago and you came over and we talked about things. Yeah. And I reached out to you. And, and then I bought busy. those eggs. That's what happened. And then it was a slippery slope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> okay. so okay. it's, it's Easter Monday is almost done, so you're good. It's so, a nice ride, though, right? That's slow. There's no more. I bought the so, model and I ate the model. So here's the thing. That's what I'm looking to make this 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 teamwork, this yeah. this so budding that, system instead of a buddy system, budding system. So you can work one on one with somebody. You don't prefer them, or you have another question with somebody else. Go to it. Go ask them. You're way playing pickleball with Greg. You go ask. Say, listen, I'm I'm doing this. What can what can what do you suggest? You see me. What can I suggest? So this is the network because. In order to make more changes on the island and help more people, we have to work. It has to multiply exponentially. Are you using it, the Facebook page as the main communication? I, I, well, I'm not. And here's the thing: is I can only do so much, and I'm not the techiest person. Okay. So I'm not going to pretend to be something that. So it's I'm easier not. for somebody to just pick up the phone and text and say, hey, "Just text help. me. Just text me. <laughs> help. <laughs> help. S O S. I need. I'm looking <laughs> for. I'm looking for this." What can you suggest? Look, oh. there's a magazine out now. Forks Over Knife has a magazine. This is yes. plant-based at Whole Foods. There's a new Forks Over Knives at Publix. It, right, but again, right. a plethora of information that's overwhelming. Exactly. I just want to know five, ten things that I can yes. eat that you don't would include. Enjoy, um, Lisa, I know you pretty well. You would enjoy, um, because Lisa, if you don't mind me saying, she's a avid athlete. She's, she wouldn't mind me saying. She's a She's from the personal training background, like with athletes. So she is looking for, you know, specific things that she can do. And I would say, you know, the Daily Dozen might be a place to start. Yes. But also, but also, um, I think your mind would jive well with, um, with uh, what's it called? Um, I should know it, right? Matt, what's his last name? Oh, Frazier. Matt Frazier. Yeah, yeah. he's an endurance guy. See, I'm a lift, you know, so then it gets yeah, but he has he has all of the he has all of the plans. So his cookbook, the um, I'll get it for you. I'll send it to you. But it's um, but then it's, a, um, she, it's not a cheat. But then, then I'm overwhelmed yeah. with now. I'm like, okay, now who am I supposed to follow? So so there's some plant based uh, power lifters like Robert Cheek or Cheeky, I guess. Cheeky, yes. um, okay. And he's got a book out. So the guy he went from just a scrawny little dude to mm -hmm. you know professional. Your body builder, okay. and all he eats is plants. Okay. So it, it's definitely 
can be done. It's gonna get enough calories. And, and then on the flip side, if I'm sorry, Jeff, just so no. quickly, the other side is that that's, an, okay, so let's just say hypothetically that's an easy navigation. For me, I find some adaptation. I have a friend who um, doesn't believe, this is not my friend actually, it's my friend's fiance, who does not believe that his life-threatening disease is affected by diet or exercise. Mm -hmm. Where do you go with that? Without you, you have to be the example. You have to be the example when they come over, you cook good food, and people have never come over to my house and say, oh, I can't eat this, it tastes too good, and it just doesn't work for me, you know? So, um, you know, you just have to keep living it, and then people right. will come around, or they won't. And, and you, you can't, can't save everyone. You can't change your You can't change your job. You can't change your yeah. The diet's very, very personal. It's deeply personal. So, yeah. deeply. You find your yeah. own taste. My best West friend like, shoots everything that moves. And eats. <laughs> I know, but this is something that, like, <laughs> this information, so I don't have to be the vehicle. Can I, can I send them to the person? But you won't go. But, you know, if it's a gift. Okay, here's a gift to you. You know, yeah. like, he's the whatever LSD and stage of religious experience <laughs> well, from, a, from a teaching point of view like at least I know I've worked with you in the past how many times Lisa both Lisa's um, Bettina Lisa another Lisa three Lisa's a lot of people a lot of people in here I've taught you know in some way shape or form or tried to think about pickleball or things about tennis or whatever it is and and sometimes it isn't the first thing you tell people, you know, hey, you should change your diet. No, I shouldn't. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's the fifth or sixth thing you say that's like, oh, you know, did you know that when you did this, you know, this looked a whole lot better? Or did you know that when you, when we had that meal last night, um, you know, that I prepared or whatever it was that, you know, how'd you feel this morning? Well, did you know that? you know, um, X, Y, and Z about the meal. You know, right. like and I did. understand it's not my responsibility, but I, if I said, hey, I heard this wonderful lecture, and it was, and you had a personal experience, you have a website, I mean, I don't want to get into, like, maybe if I gave a personal you know, well, why don't we? Why don't you, um, why don't we write Lisa's, yeah, uh, yeah, why don't we talk about it, we'll talk about it, we'll work on it. I just want to wrap yeah. up, because yeah. I want to give some other people that are waiting here. Say one other thing, right? You, you, you kind of understand how this stuff goes, all right? Also, too, if you understand, you go online or on the internet and trying to find a doctor to tell you how to eat good to uh, to live a healthy life to 200, you're going to find 99.9 percent of them are absolutely garbage. Okay, they're terrible. Okay, well, how do you know what good them now? Right, right now, right now. You know, Gregor is good. All right, prove it. Okay, all right? And you have information from him that will help you go that direction. <coughs> we talked about Ornish. You know, you know, you got two, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. John McDougall, and you have three. That's the place people you go and look at, look at their websites, look at their books. Those are the people you do. And then you can spread out from there once you realize that the people you're going to have been approved by all these other people, and that way you know you're doing the right thing rather than going someplace that's right. going to tell you something completely wrong. And also, Lisa, again, then the other thing you can have is once you've found, you know, okay, you say, I'm going to look at this person, you know, make life easy. You've then got, I think the two of you hit on something really perfect about a meal like breakfast. What is your personal preference? If you listen to both of their breakfasts, I probably won't talk about um, what they put in their breakfast is very similar, but how they prepare it is completely different right. to their own taste for for her exercise schedule in the morning and and also probably a palate preference you like this movie because you probably like the texture of this or you've grown to and, and you know what I, I don't mean to cut you yeah. and, and, and I think we need to give the people texture. because uh, we're losing some people and we want to address yeah. what was important as well so yeah. we can talk more about these things personal so texture so I'd just like to give you an opportunity to share the changes going on here and then some feedback of what we've experienced ourselves on some part of the past. And Lisa's going to address that. I'm, not, I'm sorry, Bettina is going to address that. Yeah, can I, can I start with 
sent telling how you and I met originally? Um, sure, go right ahead, please. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it was um, someone who had come to us uh, was back in January. January or so the end of the year, yep, setting yeah, up the Valentine's a, dinner. Yeah, to do a Valentine's dinner. And, um, we had met once over at Palmetto, and uh, she was sharing some, uh, you know, what they would like to see and all of that. And, um, you know, I think a lot of chefs, it makes, like, vegan cookery is very intimidating. Um, to be you know, completely honest, you saying, saying like, you know, challenges of what y'all are experiencing going on the plant-based route. Well, coming from a, you know, a background, a lot of chefs, you know, have either been trained by or have come up, um, you know, training with uh, people who are like, you know, classically French trained. You know, French food is all about the meats, the butters, the creams, the, you know, heavy dairy, you know, very rich food. And so to go from you know that's where like I would say my comfort my my comfort zone is is you know I can make a butter sauce with my eyes closed I can grill a steak to medium rare with, you know just you know by by time and all of that to then say okay now we're gonna go plant based so you gotta take all you know you take all that off the table and then so what are you left with and um and so I you know I accepted it as you know it's almost a uh, a fun challenge in in a way and I myself have done um, you know similar to Mike, and do a lot of, you know, exercise and, you know, test around with different diets and stuff. So I had done plant-based and very familiar with, like, the fork server knives, and um, actually it's one of my favorite cookbooks yeah. there. My wife cooks out of that and his other three cookbooks almost, you know, on a weekly basis. And so, um, you know, it was really uh, yeah, a fun challenge to do the, the vegan um, Valentine's Day dinner, and it kind of started off, you know, I don't know if I've told you this, you know, it really started this, um, you know, drive for us to be more transparent on a lot of the menuing and you know you know labeling things appropriately and um, I spent probably close to 10 hours working with Tommy who does all of our all of our menuing um, and with Max to develop uh, you know we went through and sat and read literally read through each menu and made sure okay, and talked with all the chefs to make sure you know these items were going to be prepared you know vegan vegetarian or gluten free and then Okay, how can we then add some of this, you know, additional offerings to all of our to all of our menus to where that if you were to go in at lunch or you know to dinner at any one of the places, you would at least have a option. You know, we we're eight thousand members here. We have to, you know, we're appealing to a very wide variety. And so it's like, okay, if we can give a option at least, you know, or at dinner time, you know, a appetizer option and then an entree option. And, um, you know, uh, so slowly we've, you know, since February of. Um, been working towards when I sat down, yeah, so, you know, we're heading in the right direction, and, um, you know, I really hope so, and, uh, you know, it's just, um, as y'all have shared, the feelings of needing to learn, and, you know, it's tardy, it started, we've experienced some of those bumps, and there was a, you know, pop-up that you, that Simone hadn't enjoyed too much, and we took that feedback, and, you know, have, you know, continued to try and, um, you know, retrain a lot of the, uh, the way that we think um, as well. Uh, and you know it doesn't come naturally for for a lot of people to um, on this, and so we definitely appreciate you know the invitation to be here tonight for sure. And um, yeah, happy to answer um, whatever it is. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I went a little long, and we went in different directions, but tried to bring it back. So um, anyway, I, you know, we've eaten out at a couple of restaurants recently, um, and you know sometimes it's good, and sometimes I think it's just trying in the wrong direction too hard. Um, like the trumpet mushrooms at Marsh would be particular, you know, really, it just, that's so hardcore that I couldn't even eat that again. I mean, that, I mean, the portobello mushroom, but it satisfied me fine. Mm -hmm. That is just a little too much, I think, and I don't know what kind of um, we still be getting. Um, and, you know, the nachos for Richard just weren't, you know, the right fit for having, you know, some vegetables. It was, you know, more chips and... Just out of like, curiosity, what was wrong with the mushrooms? We it was just too intense. Time. I mean, they were... The I texture of them... They were really good. I, I, they were you know, I say you had them, they were really good. I did, yeah. but a good friend of mine Okay, yeah, so I just, really I mean, I used to have them well done, and they were just, like, sometimes a little chewy, sometimes, you know, the, the mushroom itself wasn't consistent throughout. Um, I, I didn't, and it had beans underneath the, that was just sauce, much more flavor. But the sauce, the, the awesome. sauce was very good, but just a little bit of it. But there was just a lot of mushroom. I cooked, took them home. I cooked them. I had some leftover or curry sauce from something else. It just was not something that I enjoyed. You know, I'd just rather have another type of version of mushroom or the beans. I just, 
the beans with vegetables would have been fine. To have cannellini beans with a nice sauce and nova or something. Um, you know, Simone has a lot of, uh, she does a lot of that stuff herself, like a lot of the cooking and stuff like that. But it could be possible, like Patina was a friend of yours, not a plant-based eater. Oh yeah, yeah, plant-based. She was? Okay, well, she or he, you know, so, uh, it, I would think too, to the point that, well, maybe a lot of people order that on the menu that aren't plant-based at all. You know, so in a way, that's a victory that's in something. itself. That's in, its, in itself, that. but then also, oh, sorry, go ahead, Patina. But well, is, is now the go ahead. This is it. This is it. Winding it up. I've been a plant-based eater for close to ten years, and I do a lot of my own cooking at home. I enjoy cooking, um, and I. The main point I hope that you got tonight is that plant-based eaters are hungry. Mm -hmm. They want tasty food. There's nothing wrong. I think there's a misconception as to what a plant-based eater is like. We like a lot of flavor. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of the food that we've gotten at the clubs has no flavor and no texture. Texture is a big thing, too. Um, there's, I had the black bean and quinoa salad at the back. And it was mushy. Yeah. And there was no flavor in it. Now I've got black beans, quinoa, corn, similar salad at home, but mine's got a little spice to it. There's a little uh, um, Thai chili. There's, sometimes I feel like curry. So, you know, I've, I've put some spice to give it some flavor and then nuts to give it some crunch. And yeah. So vegetables, it's a vegetable, not then, just yes, <coughs> yes. Then I've got some raw spinach and chopped up massage kale, and it's high texture. It's off. There's your, your texture and your interest. So um, I've got some things, because I know everybody wants to go home, um, written out for you. To think about, um, but there's resources. There are a lot of people here who would be glad to sit down and say, "Okay, help you." I know it's hard. It was hard for a lot of us who were used to, "Okay, what are we going to have for dinner tonight?" It's going to be chicken, and then you build your meal around it. I don't do that anymore. Um, I'd be glad to help suggest. There are easy, easy things that the club could do, like have an option to throw some beans into a salad. Mm -hmm. A plain salad, the, the Landy's Club salad, it's lettuce, it's water. I'm not full. Right. I'm still hungry. I need beans and or Perfect. something else of interest Dark in the salad. Yeah. Yes. Potatoes, sweet potatoes, potatoes, something. Yeah, sweet potatoes. Yeah, sweet yeah. potatoes. Um, Edamames, everybody, kids, have you seen kids eat edamames? They love them, especially if they're in the pot, because then it's fun. <laughs> Why can we not have edamames? Wait, wait till Finjan, we'll have plenty of edamame. <laughs> yes, edamames at the deck for snacks. Yeah. So there's a great snack, there's protein, it's, and some fun salt. Put some fun salt on it, or on the side, if people want to cut back on their salt intake. But my husband and I, we sear, sear them in wok and then put uh, curry salt or smoked salt. And everybody who comes to the house, they're gone. They're just gone. They're wonderful. Um, so there's little things that we know about that may not be on your radar. And please use us as you know, sounding board or mm -hmm. idea. Please. I actually have a question for you. I mean, yeah, of course. It's just about recipe development. Mm -hmm. So you're going to make some new recipes and make new offerings. Who samples them? So when we did the uh, the black bean burger um, that we redid, and you now is now is on every one of our lunch menus. Um, we worked started with uh, Chef Jamar's recipe that he used for the fried black bean cake that was on that Marshall menu, and then we. And what's typical with some of this um, stuff, like the black bean burger, for instance, is where we cook, you know, we're uh, preparing, you know, it's hard to prepare 
and a super small amount and try and keep that fresh all the time when you maybe only sell one or two a day and so the way we started with our recipe development was you know researching what starches would hold up best in the freezer where we could make these you know in batches and then be able to you know vacuum seal them and then pull them out as we need them as to where we're not then you know making a batch and then throwing away you know a good portion of it and so that's where some, that's where our recipe you know we oftentimes will start with the end in mind and then work you know work our way back because the uh, reason why I, I ask that, and I am not plant-based, I would eat a cow that walked right by me, <laughs> but I was wondering if you would, you're hearing people saying mm -hmm. things are falling flat. So people who are plant-based, who may have been plant-based for a very long time and really know what plant-based eaters are looking for, I was just wondering if while you're developing these recipes, you may want to just ask somebody who knows what it should taste like and what the texture should feel like if they would want to come and try it to see if they have any. I don't yeah, know, so that's I, something we would consider. You know, we would consider. And we've done, um, you know, small tastes. Like when we changed our beef program at Marshall, we invited, you know, some heavy carnivores that were very vocal about the beef at <laughs> Marshall yeah. to come and try some of the beef. You know, a couple of different options there. So definitely something that we would consider for sure. So my question is, how much more vocal do I need to be? I have to be bigger than those cows, huh? So I just want to say that Chef Greg had an awesome bean and corn burger for me at the tennis outing like two weeks ago. I think I copied you on that and said, so why can't that be the standard? Because I've heard that the new one is mushy. His was grilled. They brought it over to the deck to grill it so it wasn't cross-contaminated on the grill with the other burgers and such like that, mm -hmm. which was awesome. That one would go over so well. Mm -hmm. And beans, they were in a can or they're dry, doesn't require refrigeration and freezer that is at shortage. Mm -hmm. So it just is, that would be the winning burger. I'm sorry, that was the winningest well, flavor be, I had It here. should be tasty to anybody. Yes, it right. shouldn't <laughs> just be plant-based mm -hmm. eaters. People should like it. Everybody yeah, should yeah. taste this and go, oh yeah, I'll have that. Mm -hmm. Anybody should. So, and there's a thing, there's a lot of people who have no intention and never will become vegan, right. vegetarian, plant-based, plant I love that word because it's so much broader. But there's a lot of people who are aware that they do, that, that, you know, the sad American diet has become pretty common. People, there's a lot more knowledge out there, and people are looking for ways to reduce their meat intake, mm -hmm. maybe for environmental <coughs> reasons, maybe for their dietary reasons. And so I think that there are plenty of people who will come to the club, and they may not want to have meat that night. And so we're not such a small number, because there are people who mm. actually just... I don't want to have meat tonight, or maybe they don't want to have fish that night, and then they look and they're like, oh, okay, I'll have steak. It should be something that everybody, that and you a, a large of, majority of people will say, oh, that sounds really good. a couple good. of options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, one is not an option. One, right? no. Yeah. <coughs> no. Yeah, yeah, and I think to, to that point, um, you know, like I said before, there's, there's, um, there's 8,000 member, 8, members mm -hmm. here. Um, you know, and so our, our goal as a, as a club is to try and appease every, you know, trying to appease everybody, else, you know, the plant-based pop-ups and all that, and being able to a, a, appease everybody also comes making reasonable accommodations. And to me, you know, where we went from having maybe 2% of our menuing island-wide was dedicated to our, you know, it was a black bean cake at Marshwood and there were a couple of things elsewhere. Now about eight percent of our total menuing across the entire club is now plant, you know, plant based. Um, and so, you know, like one of every one, you know, most of our dessert menus have five options on them. Now one every five is plant based. So when you so, have a choice of protein, add one more. Yeah, and then we have we have a lot of lunch menus. The you know, a black bean burger. Tofu. 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 Yeah. Just tofu. Yeah. Just keep tofu, tofu. or beans. Mm -hmm. yes. Beans. Yeah. Open up a can of uh, rinse them off. Put them on in white bean, black bean. Carbonzos. Carbonzos. Thank you. And your lasagna that for the plant based pop up no, was so bad. The uh, uh, Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve one. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. I, was, I was just going to say that from a, you know, from a coaching standpoint, it's a little, a little easier for me to say, well, just make additions mm -hmm. and less subtractions. Because, but with the menu, 
I know personally, I hate having a hundred choices <laughs> on a menu. You know, like to choose from. It's very like, and well, even at the grocery <laughs> store, like if you think, it's called a, it's called the paradox paradox of choice, but when you go to a grocery store and you have 8,000 tomato sauces, how could you possibly pick the one that's the best for you? Or no, the one you have to read the labels. You have to read yeah. the labels. No, I know, maybe, but, I'm, get maybe but, one I'm, with it. but I'm saying, but I'm saying I think this that. speaks to a couple points, is that, you know, you have food, a ton of food prep experience, you know, and you're, you're trying to roll out these things that are, that are amicable to the club environment, mm -hmm. you know, and it's difficult because you have to plan for not only like shipment and all these things that happen, but also, and it's the same for me too, but it's also like, um, you know, how do we, how do we present this in such a way that the, like we were talking about the plant-based eaters are happy and um, regular, you know, you could say people who eat any other type of diet, diet are happy. And I think the point would be that, like Bettina said, that everyone should enjoy what, you know, the meal by itself as it stand, stands alone. But also, I think that um, that people do have different tastes. You mm -hmm. know, some people might not enjoy something, but to me, just having that menu option is a success because yes, it's eight percent now of the total uh, diet. But also, you know, people what, simply when they choose that item, right? They're maybe being a little bit of an adventurous, or maybe they're saying like you spoke to the point of not seeing anything else on the menu and then seeing that and instead of going with the meat that night maybe they did decide to do that and they were like oh that was really good i'll have that again yeah. exactly. even if maybe somebody who has been eating plants for a long time and their taste buds have changed maybe they didn't like it as much but mm -hmm. someone who wasn't a plant-based eater tried it and said hmm. i'm gonna get that every thursday night because mm -hmm. on thursday night I go out with these people that like their steaks and stuff, and I'm I like this, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think that's great, and to you know to try to increase those options, not because it's the plant based versus everybody else, but simply because everyone likes those meals. Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't run across a single plant based meal that I didn't at some level enjoy. Yes, I have different goals in mind, like I'm looking for volume. <laughs> so I would just go into your fridge and eat it all, and I would, I would just, I would eat it. I'd be like, "Don't you more?" You know, and like that's for tomorrow, dude. Like we haven't even cooked that. Yeah, I heard you. You know, like I, I just want more. You know, like but that's me. But not everyone, you know, consumes the same way. Same way I do. We're all different. You know, we all have different uh, needs. For sure. Yeah. For sure. And I, I think that's the biggest, um, you know, balance the balance there, being able to balance. You know everybody's needs. You know across you know a very you know wide range of every, everything from you know a two year old who comes in who just wants you know some French fries to you know some someone who is on the opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, you know is very limited in what they may be eating, and so trying to feed to you know feed all of the different mouths that are out here. Plus you know our members and guests. You know it definitely becomes. Um, you know, it's a, I wouldn't say necessarily a struggle because it's, you know, it's what we do. Um, but yeah, it, 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 it can definitely be, you know, it's a balance, you know, it's a balance for sure. Well, we appreciate the uh, direction you're going in. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so very much. much. to me there's no other club that she would know of that would do something like this that would be so open to having these conversations that's right the presence here that's right. and doing the the valentine's dinner because it's setting a precedence you know? yeah we've got uh, i think i shared with you and we'll all continue to you know filter some of this information um to simone to where she can you know put this out as well but um we are planning uh plant-based um you know we have the food and beverage festival coming up in july we're working on a plant-based, um, you know, event um, through through July, and then we'll also um, plan, you know, one or two more club events towards um, the end of the year uh, that will also be plant-based as well. And, nice. Um, awesome. So yeah, yeah. Can you do me a favor? Can you just check dates with me, just yeah, so I can yeah. put it out yeah. in advance? You know, yeah. give people a heads up. Yep. Yeah. And, and the, the new uh, Asian venue that's going to be opening mm -hmm. fairly soon. We, I mean, that's. A cuisine that's oh, for sure. right for plant based. Yeah, yeah. So we've um, we've planned a couple of uh, plant based uh, rolls, uh, sushi rolls. It'll be the edamame, edamame. Of, of course. Yes. Yeah, edamame. And then um, one of the ramen bowls uh, will be a, a plant based ramen yeah, bowl as well. Yeah. So yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, just to uh, speak to everybody on um, like if you need options, I'm human, right? Um, but if you need options for faster. 
uh, fast choices. I mean, I know you have uh, the club here, but if you're out and about and you're downtown and you need options for somewhere you might not know of that has plant-based options, uh, Simone's okay. a great resource. Um, I, I eat out all the time and I find ways to make it work. Yeah. Um, and I'm maybe not as well as, as Simone sometimes, but but I do know a lot of places. Fox and Fig is, is great. So there's, a, there's a quite a few places that really that if you're in a pinch and you need something um, that you know is plant based, they do it specifically. Um, there's a place I just found uh, Simone that one of our members owns. It's called uh, Good Greens. And it's out on Whitmarsh Island, and they do. I meant to use this as an avenue for that because they do um, exactly what I volunteered my wife for some time ago. <laughs> but which you know, I spoke to her about it, and I, I spoke to Simone about it. That she was in a position where she could do that type of cooking for other people, but she wants to. Um, but that she, there is a place that I found. Um, one of our members owns Good Greens, Whitmarsh Island. Right next to the CDS there, oh, I can give you directions. It's kind of hard right, to find. Yeah, but, it's, but, it's, but, it's, but it's just the kitchen. It's just the kitchen. You walk in and it's you're immersed in that environment. They have um, they have boxes. Can you take stuff out from there? Oh yeah, it's just oh, a takeaway. Oh, but she take she pre prepares everything. So salads oh, and a lot of her stuff is is plant based. But like if you went there in the morning. I think she opens at 8 and closes at 2, so it's a morning thing. She goes and she prepares everything early in the morning, and then it's all fresh there for the day. Um, you can order with her, I believe, um, but then you can also go in and you know, just pick up things. I pick up a salad or something for lunch, and it's all there. It's done, and um, you know, it's right around like 12 or 13 bucks for, for a salad, and then the um, they, they have great smoothies too. But pretty much that's all I've had are the salads and the smoothies, but they're very good. Okay. Um, and she makes everything. You can see her making like other stuff, and you yeah, can ask her. Enough food for you. Yeah, yeah, it's enough food for me. <laughs> Which I know, I might, I might, I might, I might have it. When you see, you'll see it there, but when you see the side, the salad, and the smoothie, you know I've had all three. So <laughs> just, just text me and say, what have you had today? And I'll tell you I've had those three. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Please direct any questions you have to me.